Back to the show. I hope you enjoyed that first block as much as I did. That was fascinating. Now we're going to a little lighter and a little more, a little different kind of topic. Over the weekend, John Young, commander of Apollo 16, one of the 12 men to walk on the moon, passed away. Sadly, his death brought to seven the number of men who have visited the moon who have now died. Only five men who made it are still with us here on this earth to tell us this story. This soon after President Trump directed NASA to get us back to the moon. All right, here to talk about all of that, we're pleased to have in, joining us now, two men and a little, little bit something about the space program. And we're going to start by Charlie Duke. He walked on the moon with John Young, and we have on the phone, or joining us by the phone a little bit, will be Jim Lovell, commander of the infamous Apollo 13 flight. Uh, you might remember that one. It was a movie that starred Tom Hanks. All right, let's, let's go to Charlie right now. Charlie, we got you on the line. How are you? And good, good of you to join us. Well, thank you very much. I'm doing well. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, great, man. We got FaceTime with you, and you look fantastic, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You know, the irony is not lost on me that that phone you're doing FaceTime with is slightly a little more computer power than the, than the things you strapped your keister in and went to the moon in. Yeah, well, uh, will you say that again? Uh, you're not coming in very well uh, volume-wise. <laughs> I said it's the irony is not lost on me that that iPhone you're doing FaceTime with right now has more computing power than anything you ever strapped your keister into and went to the moon in. Well, you're right, at least with our Apollo computer, uh, the uh, iPhone I use is like 800,000 times the memory of our uh, Apollo computer. <laughs> Commander, uh, my name's Nan Hayworth, and I am just in awe of you and your accomplishments. And I, when I was a student, uh, that was in the era of Apollo, and it was such an inspiration for students across the country. I ended up majoring in science. Do you think that the president uh, bringing NASA back into the fore will actually provide fresh in for in inspiration for a new generation of Americans to have the kind of accomplishments you did? Well, I uh, yeah, I certainly will. Uh, I don't see any uh, in the younger generation. I don't see any uh, a, a problem uh, uh, in getting them enthused. Uh, last summer, NASA had a selection process, and there were eighteen thousand people uh, applied, and they picked twelve. Wow. Uh, when I applied, there were 3,500 of us, a uh, little bit different qualifications, and they picked 19. So the competition is really keen. People are really interested in being in the space program. Yeah, I know. That is fantastic. And actually joining us now on the phone uh, is Jim Lovell. He, uh, Jim was on Apollo 13, commander of the Apollo 13 mission. Jim, it's great to have you on the line as well. Uh, we're just talking with Charlie. Nana, Nana put the question to him. Do you think that the Apollo program and, and the program to take us to the moon served as an inspiration that, that we badly need at this time so that, you know, students have something to dream about, something have, people have something to aspire to? Do you think it's important, Jim? Yes. Uh, by the way, how are you doing, Charlie? <laughs> well, pretty good. Been a sad day with uh, uh, John's death. Uh, so. Uh, uh, that, that, to answer that question, I think that the initial Apollo program, and the, which started, of course, in the 60s and ended up in the 70s, early 70s, that was a great inspiration. It was really something that even overshadowed Earth orbital type flights. But then we, we haven't done that for the last 40, 40 years. And so uh, it, it would be nice to really go back to the moon, I think, that's my, my philosophy, yeah. learn more about it, be very comfortable going to the moon, building up the infrastructure, the architecture uh, of the equipment needed to do that, that would eventually then, as time goes on, to eventually uh, look at uh, going to Mars. 
Commander, uh, I, I'm inspired by you. My name's Nan Hayworth, and uh, I'm one of the students you inspired. I, I th th think about the fact that the computing power that you had at your disposal when you saved Apollo 13, I think, was contained within what today would be a handheld like calculator. Well, it's like 40 kilobytes. I right. think it was something <laughs> really ridiculous. Do you do you anticipate that what we can do today will greatly expand? Uh, what we can do, in fact, in terms of uh, interstellar travel uh, within, say, this generation? Well, I think we've uh, come a long way uh, in uh, the uh, computer industry and the communications business since the time that I flew on Apollo or Charlie did either. I mean, things are, now that we look back on them, we're very rudimentary. However, I, I, I think that uh, we have to look at the overall structure. Uh, and uh, I think we have to, you know, really know: uh, are, are we spending the money wisely? Are we getting a return from our investment mm -hmm. uh, to to do that? Um, you know, I have to say, everybody says go to Mars, but the curiosity that we put on on the surface of Mars about two, two years ago has been so informative about all the things that are there and what it looks like, and just about everything else, and analyzing the material that. You know, just to go around Mars, I think it would be a waste of time. Yeah, no, it, it is fascinating. And Charlie, I'm going to throw this question at you. Jim, you can respond afterwards. But do we do we need this challenge? I mean, we, you know, we, we hear that India is going to space and wants to go to the moon. China wants to go in space and wants to go to the moon. It seems to me that competition is an awfully good thing sometimes. Maybe we need a little shot. Maybe we need a little... Uh, spurring by other countries nationalizing themselves and mustering their will to go. What say you, Charlie? Do we need to get back uh, in the space race? Uh, I think uh, it is a, a ch competition is very important. Uh, and uh, I feel like we've, we're in the space race. Uh, you know, we've got private companies uh, talking about going to Mars and going to uh, uh, to uh, to the moon and uh, then with uh, China and uh, and Russia wanting to go to the moon I haven't heard them talk about Mars yet but uh, uh, the competition is going to be good for us I think and uh, uh, we'll see uh, our industry uh, gearing up uh, you know deep space travel uh, you're talking about technology it, it, it rockets are rockets, and we're still using the same rocket engines as we used back in those in the Apollo days. And I think for interstellar, not interstellar, but uh, to Mars and stuff, mm -hmm. a breakthrough in rocket propulsion engine technology is uh, going to be really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is really fascinating because I think well, I, I think well, there's so many things that inspire me about this. But Jim, you know. It's the indirect things that happen too. It's not just the the striving to fulfill a dream. It, it is the it is the things that the st the striving creates, the struggle creates. I mean, so much of what we have now technologically owes itself back to those original space missions, and 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 the, we had to build stuff from scratch to get it done, didn't we? Well, that's true. Uh, uh, we're, yeah, we're going to have to go back uh, to do if we want to go to the moon. We have a, 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 a spacecraft that's being built up, but I don't know if it's a, 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 the type that you could go to the moon. We don't have a lander of any sort. Uh, so uh, so we're going to have to really concentrate on what we want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. What, Commander, what do you see us, what, what do we have left to do on the moon? There's probably, I'm sure there are a thousand things you can think of, but what would be the main goal that you would have for that kind of, uh, with that kind of mission? Well, I, I think basically uh, uh, to go back and really kind of take a, a closer look at, at the, uh, the moon itself, go to various other places that we haven't been to, and also, it's a two-way street. I mean, we can learn a lot, maybe more about the moon, but we'll learn a lot more about how to go into space and go to places like the moon so we can get comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 
A, a, a dress rehearsal, if you will, as a matter of fact. Hey, guys, if I could ask you to stick around. I, I'd, I'd love to stick here, have you stick around. Earlier, I spoke with Harrison Schmidt, uh, Senator Harrison Schmidt out of New Mexico. He was, as you both know, also an Apollo astronaut. Uh, we're going to have that conversation when I come back. And then uh, I'd like you all to rejoin us in the block following because uh, I, I want to continue this conversation and, and get your thoughts on a couple of things as well. All of that right after this quick break. Thanks, guys. This is a fascinating conversation. Is still there? 